Hi everyone, it's Dr. Campbell. Welcome to another ICD-10 CM Coding Guideline session, where today we're going to focus on Chapter 20, which are the external causes of morbidity, codes V00 through Y99. External cause codes are actually intended to provide data that's necessary for injury research and evaluation of injury prevention strategies. These codes actually capture five things. Number one, they capture how the injury or health condition happened. That's the cause. It also captures the intent, unintentional or intentional, or intentional such as suicide or assault. The second or the third type of code for external causes represents the place where the event occurred. Also, the activity of the patient at the time of the event, and then their status. And their status is namely civilian or military if they were doing this for work or volunteer. External cause codes should never, ever, 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 be sequenced as principal or first listed diagnoses, they're always going to be in the second position. Of note, there is no requirement, no, no national mandatory requirement for use of these codes. And unless your state says that these codes are mandated or your payer is mandating that you list these codes, they're actually not required. In absence of a mandatory reporting requirement, providers are encouraged to report voluntary external cost codes as they do provide valuable data, again, for injury research and evaluation of injury prevention statuses. So um, first, let's talk about some general guidelines. Number one, these codes can be utilized with any code in the range of A00 0.00 through T88.9 and Z00 to Z99. We haven't talked about Z00 to Z99 yet. That's our next session. Now, these codes are mostly applicable to injuries. They're also valid for use in such situations like infections or diseases due to some external source and other health conditions such as a heart attack that could occur while a patient is exercising. The external cause codes, and I know you're thinking, not again, but yes, the external cause codes do have seventh character classification. And those seventh characters, initial encounters, subsequent encounter, and sequela, you're familiar with those, those identify the injury or condition that is being treated. There are a full range of external cause codes available. I just went over the five types of external cause codes. And so you will use those to completely describe the cause, the intent, the place of occurrence, and if applicable, the patient's activity, um, as well as the patient's status. You can use as many of these codes as necessary. However, if the form, the claim form that you are using is, or, or the situation that you are coding limits the number of external cause codes that you're going to report, you're going to select the one that is most closely related to the principal diagnoses. All right, still talking about general guidelines for external cause codes. Something that's very important to note is that your external cause codes actually have their own alphabetical index. So if you think back to the structure of the alphabetical index, you have the index of diseases and injuries, you have the neoplasm table, you have the table of drugs and chemicals, and then immediately after that, the last section of the alphabetical index is the index to external causes. So that's where you go to begin the process of locating your external cause codes. So we already talked about external cause codes can never be used as a principal or first listed. They must always be in the secondary and beyond position. Certain external cause codes are actually combination codes that can identify 
events in a sequence as a result of an injury, such as a fall, which subsequently results in striking an object. The injury may be due to either event or it could be due to both. A combination external cause code that is used should correspond to the sequence of events regardless of which caused the most serious injury. No external cause code from chapter 20 is needed if the external cause and the intent are all embedded in one code. So for example, T36.0x1 says poisoning by penicillins, accidental, unintentional. So no external cause code is needed for that situation. All right, place of occurrence codes. Place of occurrence codes are in category Y92. And again, they are secondary codes for use after other external cause codes, specifically to identify the location of the patient at the time of injury or other condition. When you're in your index, you'll, and the external cause index, you're going to go to the main term of place of occurrence, and then you'll look at the different options that are there. Generally, a place of occurrence code is only assigned once at the initial encounter for the treatment. However, in rare circumstances, um, a new injury may occur during a hospitalization, and then you can assign an additional place of occurrence code. Of note, there are no seventh character classifications for category Y92. Lastly, do not use the place of occurrence code Y92.9 if the place is not stated or is not applicable. Next up, we have our activity codes. They are in code family Y93. They describe the activity of the patient at the time of the injury or other health condition that has occurred. Only one Activity code is used and it's used once at the initial encounter for a treatment. Also, these activity codes do not apply to poisoning, adverse effects, misadventures, or sequela. Also, there is a code Y93.9, unspecified activity. You don't use this code if the activity is not stated. So you don't just habitually put this code on. The activity has to be stated. Also, a code from category Y93 is appropriate for use with external cause and intent codes if identifying the activity provides additional information about the event. All right, place of occurrence, activity, status codes used with other external cause codes. When applicable, the place of occurrence, activity, external cause status are sequenced after the main external cause codes. Regardless of the number of external cause codes that are assigned, generally there should be only one place of occurrence code, one activity code, and one external cause code assigned to an encounter. However, in the rare instance that a new injury occurs during a hospitalization, an additional place of occurrence code may be assigned, and I went over that before. If the reporting format limits the number of external cause codes that can be used when you're reporting your other clinical data, report the code for the cause or intent that is most closely related to the principal diagnosis. If the format permits capture of additional external cause codes, then the cause slash intent, including medical misadventures of the additional events should be reported rather than the place, activity, and external cause. So you should be seeing a theme here. Place, activity, and external cause, those are nice to report, but you want to get the cause intent code first. All right, multiple external cause coding guidelines. So sometimes more than one external cause code is required to fully describe the external cause of an injury or illness. Coding guidelines do give us a sequencing priority. So if two or more events cause separate injuries, an external cause code should be assigned for each cause. Your first listed code, however, has a sequencing priority. So child and abuse codes, 
take priority over all other external cost codes. Terrorism events take priority over external cost codes except child and abuse. Look at our hierarchy triangle here. Cataclysmic events take priority over all external cost codes except child abuse and, of course, terrorism. Codes for transport accidents take priority over all other external cost codes except everything that is above transport accidents and activity and external cost status are assigned following all intent external cost codes. As a reminder, the first listed external cause code should correspond to the cause of the most serious diagnoses due to an assault, accident, or self-harm. And you're going to use the order, the hierarchy that you see on the slide here for you right now. All right, child and abuse guidelines. So child and adult abuse, neglect, and maltreatment are all classified as assault. Any of the assault codes may be used to indicate the external cause of the injury resulting from the confirmed abuse. In those situations where you have a confirmed case of abuse, neglect, and maltreatment, when the perpetrator is known, and we saw this in chapter 19, you're going to use code Y07, and those should accompany any of your other assault codes. All right. Unknown or undetermined intent. So if the intent, intent is specified as accident, self-harm, accident. So if the intent of the cause of injury or other condition is unknown or unspecified, coding guidelines state to record this as accidental. All transport accident categories assume accidental intent. Now, as it relates to undetermined intent, these are only used if the documentation in the record specifies that the intent cannot be determined. Sequela, you know it wouldn't be a coding guideline review if we didn't talk about sequelas. So sequelas, aka late effect, are reported using the external cause code with the seventh character of S for sequela. These codes should be used with any report of a late effect or a sequela resulting from a previous injury. And we talked about uh, sequelas and late effects so many times. We started actually talking about them in section 1B guideline number 10. Now, when you have situations where there is a sequela external cause code with a related current injury, you should never report them. So a sequela external cause code should never be reported with a related current injury code. All right, a um, couple of more guidelines. Oh, I got one more guideline. I, I missed one thing. So um, sequela external cause codes for subsequent visits. So that last guideline I was talking about current injury. So a sequela for a subsequent. You use a late effect external code for a subsequent visit when a late effect of the initial injury is actually being treated. Do not use a late effect external cause code for subsequent visits for things like follow-up care of the injury when no late effect of the injury has been documented. All right, now I'm done with that. On to terrorism guidelines. So terrorism guidelines have to be identified, or I should say terrorism events, have to be identified as terrorism by the FBI, the federal government, okay? So if the government says that a situation is terrorism, the first listed external cause code should be from category Y38, which is actually our terrorism category. There is a note in your tabular list at the beginning of category Y38 that you'll want to pay close attention to. Use additional codes for the place of occurrence and more than one Y38 terrorism code may be assigned if the injury is the result of more than one mechanism of terrorism. When the cause of injury is suspected to be the result of terrorism, you're not going to use Y38. 
Why? Suspected cases should be classified as assault and not terrorism. Why 38.9 is a code for secondary effects. This is for use for conditions occurring subsequent to the terrorist event. This code should not be assigned for conditions that are due to the initial terrorist act. This is only for a secondary effect. All right, guys, and lastly, external cause status. This is the last category in this family, Y99, and these codes should be assigned whenever any other external cause code is assigned for an encounter, including your activity code. So you're going to assign a code from this category to indicate the work status of the person at the time that the event occurred. The status code actually indicates whether the event occurred during a military activity, whether the person was non-military at work. Um, it could also be a student, a volunteer. Now, a code from Y99 should be assigned when applicable with other external cause codes such as transport accidents or falls. The external cause status codes are not applicable guys to poisoning, adverse effects, misadventures, or late effect. Lastly, do not assign a code from category Y99 if no other external cause codes are applicable for that encounter. These codes can only be used once at the initial encounter and should only be one Y99 category code. There is a code Y99.9 unspecified external cause status. You do not assign that if the status is not stated. So the bottom line is the status has to be stated. All right, guys, that has been another ICD-10 CM coding guideline session. Our last chapter specific guideline, chapter 21, factors influencing health status and contact with health services. See you real soon.